Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jeremy Cardi and I'm going to uh, show you how to find Comet Neowise tonight. Uh, we have a live stream planned where if you, you know it's cloudy in your area or you can't make it up to a spot where you can see the comet for yourself, we're going to be streaming that from our six inch telescope tonight. Uh, we had a live stream on Friday as well, um, but we changed our setup a little bit and we think it, it should work a little better uh, for this stream. Um, but I want to show you how to find it first. And again, last week uh, we used a program called Stellarium. I'll be doing the same now. Um, but we won't just be looking for Comet Neowise. Uh, we are also going to look for the International Space Station. But let's start with Neowise. Uh, we have it set for the current time here. And you can already see it's up in the sky. Uh, but it's not quite visible yet. Usually it takes about an hour after sunset uh, to show up in the sky just because it is a little bit dimmer uh, than it once was, especially when we were seeing it in the morning skies. So uh, we're going to advance time a bit here, get the sky a little bit darker. So again, we're thinking uh, right now it's just after 9.10, so maybe around 9.30, 9.45, it'll show up and it'll definitely show up nice in our, in our scope. So there it goes, darkening in the northwest. You're going to want to look due northwest at the start of the night here. and if you notice, I'll pause the sky. You see the Big Dipper there? You're looking for the bottom of the cup of the Big Dipper. You can sort of take this bottom star and drag it right on down to the comet into the northwest. And just to show you, it's right in between the legs of the Big Bear. I'll turn the artwork on too so you can see the Big Bear there. And it's right in between those two legs, but those parts of the constellation aren't terribly bright, so you're going to want to look for the Big Dipper instead. So I'll turn those off. Look for the cup of the Big Dipper and look straight down towards the northwest, and you're looking for this fuzzy, ghostly object. It's pretty big at this point, but it really helps to look with your uh, averted vision, uh, your peripheral vision, uh, and that should come out. A, it'll stand out a bit more when you're looking just off to the side of it. That goes for a lot of dim objects out there, like galaxies as well. Uh, so let's keep traveling through time. Slow down one touch there. I'm going to turn the constellations off because we're going to have another visitor tonight uh, that's going to sort of cross paths with the comet. Should be around 10 or so. We're looking for this big, bright, star-like object. Perhaps you've already, you already know what it is. There it is. Slow it down one touch more. That is the International Space Station. We can click on it there. Look at it go. It's going to rise up just about where the comet is. And it will, it will be pretty bright. Way brighter than the, the comet, in fact. So be on the lookout for that tonight. Crossing paths. This looks like right around. Let's go back. See when it rises. It looked like right around 10 o'clock when I, when I glanced at it. Yeah, it looks uh, actually yeah, around 10.05, the ISS will rise, and you're going to look right around where you're seeing the comet for its flyover. And you can wave to the astronauts that are on board right now, like Douglas Hurley and Bob Behnken, who flew aboard the Dragon capsule. Uh, Douglas Hurley, of course, is our uh, local, one of our local astronauts from a week ago. So be on the lookout for him. Wave to the ISS as, you, as they fly by the comet. Okay, so that's the... Uh, where you can find the comet tonight. I will show you one last thing with this. And I'm going to make sure that we have our star trails on. And we're going to watch the path of the comet throughout the days coming up. See how it changes. Now, the 22nd is when we uh, make our close approach. So when Earth, Earth is closest to Comet Neowise. Um, and after that, we'll probably see a significant dimming uh, drop-off from the comet uh, because at that point, the comet's already sort of dimming because it's moving away from the sun, um, but then it'll be moving away from the sun and us. So we, we will maybe see some quite significant dimming there. But you can see if I go to the 21st, 22nd, you can see the comet's going to continue to rise in the sky. Move across the Big Dipper there and it's heading towards Arcturus from night to night. So you still have some opportunities here, but here in the Vestal, uh, New York area, we have some clear skies. So tonight's a great opportunity. There's no moon either. 
to get in our way of, of viewing it. So go out and, and check it out. Last thing I'll show you, uh, again, I like to use the Space Engine program in addition to Stellarium. So let's switch over to that. There's Space Engine should come up. There it is. So we have the Earth here orbiting around the Earth. Ooh, there's the sun. Last time we flew to Comet Neowise, so let's do that one more time. There it is. Whoa, right up close. Let's zoom out a little so we can see the tails. You're looking for the dust tail tonight. You won't see the ion tail, this blue tail with your eyes. But cameras are picking it up, so if you have a good DSLR, maybe try taking a few snapshots of the, uh, of the comet and you might see that ion tail. But the dust tail is what our eyes are going to pick up in the sky, as well as the nucleus, the big bright nucleus. That's the brightest, that's actually where the rock is, uh, the, the dirty snowball that we talked about last time. So be on the lookout for uh, the comet tonight. Uh, I do wanna show you its orbit. In Space Engine, we can see the comet's orbit. So let's zoom out and you can see the planets here. They all fall in a plane the plane of our solar system, all eight of those planets, uh, roughly in the same plane. Comets, however, come at all different directions in our solar system. Um, and they are from the outskirts, far out, and they take a long time to travel. Look at how huge that orbit is for that comet. Uh, in fact, it's a 6,000 year orbital period. So that means it takes 6,000 years to complete one orbit. And we can sort of get a sense for this if we start traveling through time. Let's see, we're in 2020. Let's speed up. Let's watch the comet fly out of the solar system. There it goes. Now it's moving. <laughs> Look at the time scale, though. 10 uh, to the eighth power. Let's keep going. We're already in 20, almost 2100, or, yeah, 2100, there we go. <laughs> it's still going. Let's speed up even more. Because as it moves away from the sun, it starts to slow down, right? Uh, because it's going to eventually swing back around. So these lengthy orbits, uh, they take a while. Let's keep increasing the speed. <laughs> there it goes, swinging around. Whoa, oh, <laughs> so we, we, it was around when we bounced around the sun there, because again, it's going to speed up as it gets closer to the sun. Uh, it uh, was around 8,000 years, which makes sense, right? We're about 6,000 year orbital period to end up back where we are. So this is your only chance to see Comet Neowise. Uh, it won't be people uh, 6,000 years from now, we'll, we'll see it again, but uh, this is our only chance in our lifetime. So go out tonight while it's still clear. Um, if not, if it's cloudy in your area, we will be live streaming. This is going to be a separate stream from this one, and it should be a, starting at around 9.30, uh, at the latest 9.45, depending on how many tech, technical difficulties we run into. Uh, but uh, be on the lookout for that tonight, and we hope to see you there. Thanks for watching, everyone.